Apocalypse Gaming. So looking at the stage we're at, I've put a dry fit of the planks on to see what I should add. I'm thinking of leaving that one off. I think it's just too much on the roof. Whereas if I take that and just have it to the very back, I think that gives a better balance than having that one on as well. And then I've got these dry fitted here. They're adhering because the varnish is a little bit tacky, so I'm using that to my advantage to see what I think of them. Um, but they'll pop off with the slightest pressure. I'm not sure, I think maybe more like that, covering the window a wee bit more. Oh, looks like the varnish is curing too much now. Nope. So, I think we'll go ahead with that. Um, I think I might prefer that one as well. stage we're at I think it's time these went on because some of the other stains that I've now gotten can be using is light earth and um, dark dust road dust and I think those would be accumulated on these bits as well now although they'd have been rust free so yeah I'm pretty sure it's time to add these to the model so that's them glued in place we are really almost there and um, really marching on I've still not done these pipes because I've still not decided what I want to do them. I'm going to have to make the call, so I'm just going to go with a dark grey as if it's like a rubber pipe. And, um, because I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to go with a dark grey rubber pipe and style bit just to finish them off. But that's where we're at at the minute. Definitely think it's taking shape. So the colour I'm going to use is 165 grey green from Vallejo. So what do you think these do? What do you think those barrels are for? Is it water? Is it diesel? Is it to run a generator inside the dilapidated bus? Is it a meth lab? Gonna build a meth lab? What is it? I'll tell you one thing, it's not, it's not neat painting. Let's see if I can fix that. Slight wee change of plan, I'm going to use my leaking and stain set. Um, I've got lime green, dirty green and brown green here just to build up some residue on these planks. I had planned doing that but I was going to do that next but thinking about it logically, better time to do this now. So I'm going to apply these now. Now as I want these colours to mix into each other a little bit, I've prepped all three. I've got them in my palette and I've thinned them with some flow improver and I'm going to just go in and apply, oops, too much. That's what happens when you're doing things live, you can screw up. So, applying all three, try and get a stain in that will mix and blend to the wood. again because the wood's been out here for a while so things have got a hold of it and started to grow on it would be the thinking across the top. I'm not thinking too heavily which colour I'm stabbing it into either. Try and get that variation throughout it. side because I did and I 
if I need to go on again. Oh well. Let's try and get a bit on all the planks. dry and then if we need to apply another coat we will. So now those colours have had time to dry I'm going to use smaller patches just of the raw colour just to try and strengthen it in one or two areas. Again just trying to give the idea this has been going on for a long Give a regular pattern with your brush, try and get sort of randomization just by sort of jiggery pokery flicking it. go up a tone into the dirty green and then the brown green and just try and catch round about those same areas. So clean my brush so I don't pull out my pot. giving way to an older, more rotten style. I'm really trying to give the impression that this has been lying derelict for a long time.
they were a nice paint these as well, they're a kind of oily substance to the acrylic medium that's in it. Um, doesn't feel like a, a standard acrylic paint when you put it on. This is different from a standard acrylic in the way it feels and settles as, and to me it is different. Um, how to describe it, it feels slippy, is that how you would describe it? It feels like a slippy paint, I don't know how to put it. It's a difficult thing for me to describe. So that first really wet, thinned coat just gives us a tone to work with and pull to, but the real body of work gets done now. still remains. I can just sort of pull and push different colours that are still a bit wet in each other. Don't want to order that start to look brushed, but I've got another random globule going. Colour and some zones. That looks a bit better. Time to let 
Right then, that's it dry, so I'm going to go in and varnish. I did this off camera because I forgot about it and realised, oh damn, it's lying around, so I've just flung it away. So I quickly did that one as well, because it hadn't been attached, I forgot about it. Time to varnish! This would be a good time to talk about what I use to keep my airbrush clean. I use by and large three products H2O, Medea or Medea airbrush cleaner. This I use generally between um, colours if I've used the water, then I use this for a quick rinse through as well. And for the times where the brush is a little bit gunked up and I haven't cleaned it out properly, Liquid Reamer. This is your life saving product. If you muck up your brush and leave a paint in there that wells your brush, this is the thing that melts it. It's an awesome piece of kit. It costs a fortune though to get through the post. It's a five or a can and it lasts for ages. But due to the Royal Mail's restrictions now, this has to be sent by courier and can't go Royal Mail. So pick it up at a brick and mortar store or pick it up at a model and show because it's cheaper to buy it that way. Because it's a five or a can online, it's a five or at these places but you have to get it sent by courier if you buy it online.